Katie Couric, Alaska is like a microcosm of America. In Going Rogue, she credits her part Yupik Eskimo husband for educating her about social diversity. But in our fourth story in the countdown, the widening credibility gap in Sarah Palin's so-called diversity credentials, the reason she left school in Hawaii, her own father says it's a, quote, minority-type thing. Palin's academic odyssey brought her to five colleges in five years, two of those in Hawaii. Palin writes of her college experience with friends in the Aloha State as a little too perfect. Perpetual sunshine isn't necessarily conducive to serious academics for 18-year-old Alaska girls. After that first semester, we realized we'd better transfer back to something closer to reality so we could actually earn our degrees. Father tells the same story a little differently. In the more neutral account, Sarah from Alaska, the book's authors, two journalists who covered the McCain campaign, interviewed Palin's father, Chuck Heath. According to Chuck, they write, Sarah's decision had to do with being outside her comfort zone for the first time in her life in an environment dominated by Asians and Pacific Islanders. Quote, it wasn't, just wasn't exactly what they expected, he says. They were a minority type thing, and it wasn't glamorous, so she came home. Meanwhile, Palin taking time off from the going rogue flying circus to speak at the Washington Gridiron Dinner, the famed white tie event for the Inside the Beltway journalists, breaking from tradition this year, allowing reporters to write about the traditionally off-the-record event. Palin keeping the self-deprecation to a minimum, instead mocking the elites that were hosting her, but focused mostly on her animosity towards the McCain campaigners. While talking about her book tour, the view is so much better from inside the bus than under it. Congressman Barney Frank also cracked wise at the event, which prompted Palin to quit, uh, quip that the Gridiron Club should forego Frank and allow the McCain campaign to offer a rebuttal instead. Palin also offered up this bit of irony, the New York Times reporting, when Ms. Palin noted how busy she has been, with five kids a book tour running a huge state, Mr. Frank looking quizzical, seemingly wondering at her last item since she unexpectedly quit as governor last summer. This just in. Joining me now, MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf, also senior strategist at Public Strategies and author of Renegade, The Making of a President. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Casey. Good to see you, sir. Uh, we, we, Palin has established, whether or not this is legitimate, but has established this persona as woman of the people. Right. We can now ask, after some of these quotes in the uh, Sarah from Alaska book, which people is she talking about? Well, as you know, it's the American archetype, the silent majority that is you pick loving, <laughs> God fearing, moose hunting, wolf shooters. Uh, and and be, to be honest, this Hawaiian incident isn't just an insight into her thinking, her worldview. Mm -hmm. It does speak to this bigger problem the Republican Party has. If you're excluding Latinos, and it's not just Lou Dobbs, but if you're excluding Latinos and you have no inroad with African Americans, and now Asian Americans are kind of weird too, which is uh, a big problem in California if you're ever going to make a play there. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? And let's face it, for Republicans now, a candidate who's not from the Old South is diverse. So um, this kind of diversity doesn't take them very far as an electoral map. Well, but there is always the chance that she might run unopposed sometime. Or a Republican might get just scare the Democrat from running. They, they, could, they could clear the field that way, if not by firepower, then by um, intimidation. That last note from the gridiron dinner that she's been so busy running a state. Yes. I was rereading Rick Perlstein's wonderful Nixon mm -hmm. land, and um, uh, the woman of the people idea, she charges her people 16 bucks for a mm -hmm. photo at the book signing. Diversity. She's either troubled by Hawaiians or doesn't feel, she feels like she's a minority among Hawaiians. Is she, is she channeling Nixon? I mean, whatever you think your, your people want you to be, you just simply say, that's what I am, and then they, who also don't, don't actually fulfill those bills, say, yes, you're that way and so are we too, and that's the way you, you roll this out? Is she, is she trying that Nixon playbook of, I'm a populist, I love people, just not individual people? <laughs> The ghost of Richard Nixon will be visiting you this Christmas with that. Uh, I, there is a cultural uh, game book that the Republicans have been playing for many years. Mm -hmm. at, at some point, it reaches breaking point. You cannot say that you're out there opposing the so-called death tax, which affects people at the upper end of 1% uh, of, uh, of income earners in this country, and also be, you know, your uh, Joe the Plumber kind of person. There is an inherent tension, and Sarah mm -hmm. Palin, God bless her, is exposing this kind of stuff because in the end, not being a governor, being a, an extremely now wealthy uh, author, she has got to work pretty hard to say she's a woman of the people. But she's still governor, apparently. She's uh, a governor her, of the mind. In her own mind. It's a thought that counts. And uh, it's going to a place where you're supposed to take swings almost exclusively at yourself, the gridiron dinner. 
This is the second time that we know of that she's sort of played outside the rules. The Saturday Night Live example, which I always use, is just so telling, where the first line they wrote for her to say in response to the Tina Fey impression was, you know, I kind of like her impression, which would have just blown up the entire cliche. It might not have changed anything in terms of the election last year. But when does some supporter or advisor say to her, you cannot keep skipping these opportunities to make fun of yourself before somebody else does? Remember, the whole point about uh, endearing yourself to this crowd. The whole point of the self-deprecation is to show you have a human side. And actually there was this guy who came up in 2006 with a gridiron dinner who hadn't done a whole lot and got a lot of attention. His name was Barack Obama and he made a big joke about this. That, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he'd been on the cover of Newsweek, he'd had a best-selling book and, and maybe what else was there to do? He said maybe pass a law or something. So you take a swipe at yourself because even though you're a big deal with a bunch of people dressed up like penguins, you are saying, hey, I know this is fake. Uh, you can and you should make jokes about other people. She did that, right. but you're not showing a human side and uh, maybe scientific tests will show the human side. Richard Wolf of MSNBC, author of Renegade and also with Public Strategies. Great thanks as always. Thank you, Keith.